Hollywood in the glamour capital of the world, Hollywood, California, the annual presentation of the Academy Awards by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Yes, Hollywood holds its breath tonight, along with the rest of the world, waiting to hear the winners of those coveted golden Oscars. Possibly the warmest welcome of the night waits Eve Drake and Howard Adams, the only husband and wife in Hollywood's history to both be nominated for the top acting awards in the same year. Will Eve and Howard score a double victory? They should be arriving any moment now. Darling, turn it off, please. I'm too nervous. How's my tie look? Mm, oh, just like a tie. That's all I ask. You think this dress looks all right, don't looks you? Looks fine, just fine. Oh, oh, darling, do promise me something, will you? When you win, don't ever change. You know, sometimes people start taking themselves pretty seriously. Of course I won't change, and I won't win either. Because I don't think I could bear it if we ever quarreled. You didn't exactly go to pieces the last time. No wonder my feet hurt. I got two pairs of socks on. Suppose neither of us wins. Well, we'll just have to take it on our stride. Oh, what a horrible thought. Good luck, darling. You'll win your Oscar in a walk. Oh, no, I'm just a long shot, but you're bound to get yours. Not a chance, I tell you. Not a chance. I've lost it. What? My acceptance speech. Oh, well, never mind, darling. You can use mine. Thanks. by an actress. The envelope, please. Thank you. The industry is indeed proud to present this award. The winner, Miss E. Drake, for her splendid performance in Three Gardenias. Good heavens! Oh, how wonderful, darling! I didn't think you had the ghost of a chance. Oh. <laughs> and now, for the finest performance by an actor. The envelope, please. The winner is Howard Gerard. Howard Gerard, for his unforgettable portrayal of the 12-year-old boy in the penetrating study of juvenile delinquency, the homeless. At 12 years of age, Master Gerard is the youngest actor ever to receive this high honor. Thank you very much. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. But if you had to lose, at least it's nice to know you lost to a better man. Wonderful, Mervis. <laughs> I'm so thrilled, darling, I can't tell you. I think you're Darling, uh, no hurry. You just take your time. Any time when you have that, you let us know. Yes. No hurry. Uh, Remember that. All right, Fritz. I'll be right there. Thanks, darling. Carmelita, straighten me, will you? Thank you. Dearest. Yes. Would you mind if I made one teeny weeny little suggestion about the scene? No, what? Well, don't you think you're taking it just a little big when I shoot you? Big? Mm-hmm. Well, a man doesn't get shot every day, you know. It's uh, kind of a big thing. Uh, bullets aren't good for you. They hurt. Oh, well, I was only trying to be helpful. Thanks a heap. Sweetie, uh, are you ready? Are you sure you are ready? Yes, darling, of course. Certainly. All right. Let's go. Here. Now, you are lying here. Yes. So? How's the thing? Oh, like this? That's fine. All right. Turn over. And action. Oh. Any two-bit pony that's willing to buy you a drink, you give the big smile, a big come on. What are you going to do when I walk out on you, huh? You'll be nothing, just like you were when I first met you. I pushed you every inch of the way, and now I'm through. You've had it, kid. You know, 
the toughest thing about love, kid. <laughs> Falling out of it. Cut! Please! Please! No wonder you won the Academy Award last night. As you this kid will let me tell you, we are how proud we are of you. How very, very proud. Yes, you keep this up, you'll be winning another Academy uh, Award before we know it. Isn't she magnificent? Oh, At the same, she didn't even want the deal. What a woman. Oh, here's one of the team here. Hiya, Howie. Hey, here's Sheila Graham. Hello, darling. Hi, Sheila. My, you look as though you've been put through a ringer. You know, this demon press agent of yours says he has a good angle for a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, marriage, they said, would never last. <laughs> How about that, Howie boy, huh? <laughs> This is the kind of story that usually breaks in the fan magazines about a month after the couple has split up. Well, we don't have to worry about that in this case. <laughs> Do we, Howie boy? Not if Sheila runs it tomorrow. Are you two breaking up? No, I'm just making a small joke. I just have a little telephone call to make, but I'll be back. Hey, Sheila. Hey, Howie, what have you done? What have you done? To... Sheila! Sheila! Oh, darling, he's not going to take our picture. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, boys. Back to work we go. Back Come on. to work. All right. You're eating a banana. Yes, but only in an ordinary way. I'd be grateful for any small suggestion. You're allergic to bananas. Your rash will come back. It's here. Where? It must be worn out after that last scene. You're behaving like a child just because I made a small suggestion about the scene. That's me. Hate small suggestions, love big ones. Oh, really? <gasps> Sheila, darling. Hi. Dearest. <laughs> Now, does that look like a couple that's breaking up? I'm an old hand in Hollywood, Marty. I smell things before they happen. In this case, I'd say that an actor's disease called Oscar poisoning is about to set in. Sheila, you write that. You could ruin them. But anyway, nothing can happen now. Why not now? Well, because tonight they're going on TV coast to coast, the Ned Darrow show, people to people. Millions are going to be looking at the most successful Hollywood marriage since Lassie and Laddie. They don't dare fight at a time like... That's, that's right, test that camera. It's good. Stand by, kid. Come on. We're on the air in 30 seconds. Howie, step back to your mark. And darling, don't forget to look right into the camera. Television is different from pictures, you know. Is that so? You know, I never thought of that before. And when we move around, keep the good side of your face to camera. You bet I will, Coach. Oh, and darling, let's try to be as dignified as possible. After all, we do have to live up to our Oscar now. Our Oscar? Get ready. Ten seconds. Good luck. <laughs> our Oscar. Tonight, we are going to visit one of Hollywood's happiest married couples, Eve Drake and Howard Adams. These two talented and glamorous people are proof indeed that marriage is here to stay in the fickle film capital. Who knows, we may learn the secret of their perfect compatibility. Good evening, Eve. Good evening, Ned. Oh, and welcome to our house. Have you met my husband, Howard Adams? No, Eve, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Good evening, Howard. Good evening, Ned. Eve. I suppose between now and last night, you've been asked this question a thousand times, but I'm going to ask it again. How does it feel to win the award? Well, I'm glad to answer that, Ned. And I'm very happy to have this opportunity to thank all the millions of people who go to see motion pictures and appreciate one's work. And I'm also glad to have the chance to thank all those who have been so loyal. Of course, you must have been uh, rooting mighty hard for Howard, too. Pardon? Oh, yes, yes, of course. The suspense was awful. Uh, forgive me, Howard, but um, how does it feel not to win the Oscar? Well, it was a, a case of youth versus age. You know how it is with us older fellows, Ned. The legs go first. <laughs> anyway, darling, you do own half an Oscar. Community property, Ned. <laughs> Incidentally, how does it feel to be the husband of the first lady of the screen? Well, uh, a lot like uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, I imagine. We both have our queens, and what more could we ask? And we're both very happy. Except, of course, the Duke travels more. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> oh, uh, Eve, 
Is that um, Oscar himself I see on the table there? Oh, yes, it is, Ned. Come this way. Here it is. There is every actress's dream come true. Yes, Ned. A dream I owe to all the wonderful people who made it possible. The writers, the director, the crew, the cameraman. Especially the cameraman. To everyone. And she's worked so hard for it, Ned. Years and years. Well, I remember when I was in high school, I thought Eve should have won the award, not Janet Gaynor. Of course, Seventh Heaven was a fine picture, but that job that Eve did in Jungle Orchids with that gorilla... Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I don't remember Jungle Orchids, Howard, but uh, I'll certainly take your word for it. And uh, Now, uh, perhaps you'd uh, like to take us on a little uh, tour of your home. From where I sit, it's beautiful. Oh, why, yes, of course, Ned. As you can see, this is our living room. And, oh, yes, we mustn't forget. Over here, we have a lovely collection of family photographs. Would you like to see them, Ned? Well, uh, yes, I'm sure that would be very, uh, <clears throat> very interesting. Picture of Howard's grandfather. He was a very famous judge from Boston. Isn't that right, darling? Yes, that's right. He was a judge, all right. A judge of horses and women. But not from Boston. Boston's where they caught him, dear. Well, um... <clears throat> Where do we go next? <laughs> well, we can show you Howard's den. You know, I've often wondered why they call a man study his den. Makes him sound like some sort of an animal, doesn't it? Oh, there you are, Ned. Are we still on? Indeed you are. Oh, Howard, uh, what is that uh, over on the mantel? It looks like um, some kind of award. An award? Where? Oh, yes, uh, Ned. Uh, uh, this is my award. Uh, first prize in the potato sack and three-legged race. Won it at the studio picnic last year. But of course, Ned, as you well know, no award is ever won alone. And I'd like to take this occasion to thank all those who made it possible. First, there was Giovanni Sorelli of the Como supermarket who supplied the bag, uh, burlap, that is. And uh, then there was Elmer Peters, the judge, and all the starters. And I'd like especially to thank my partner, good old Jack Barney of the electrical department. Without him and his strong right leg, I would never have won. Oh, yes, yes, it was a wonderful achievement, Ned. And Howard was just like a little boy. But then, of course, I suppose all great men are little boys at heart. I'll show you what I mean. Now, over here, Ned, is Howard's private library. As fine a set of first editions as you'll find anywhere. His favorites are Space Cadets, mm -hmm. Prince Valiant, and Little Iodine. It is in this room, Ned, that I am alone to practice. Practice what? Oh, uh, I don't have to depend on an acting career alone. Uh, I'm a, a finger snapper, a, a knuckle thumper. <laughs> Well, perhaps you'd uh, like to give us a little uh, demonstration. Oh, shucks. Now? Well. You see, there are a lot of things a man can do besides win an Oscar. <laughs> Indeed, there are. Well, we must be running out of time, Ned. I wish this visit could last forever. Not much longer. Go. <laughs> We do hope you'll come and visit us again soon, Ned. Oh, indeed we will. And congratulations again, Eve Drake. And thank you, Howard Adams. Good night, Ned. Good night, Eve. Good night, Ned. Good night. And good luck. Are you awake? Who? I couldn't go to sleep thinking about what happened tonight. About our fighting like that. Now, I realize there are two sides to everything. And I think I've been entirely fair, entirely reasonable. And I've come to an important conclusion. Do you want to hear it? You're 100% wrong. <laughs> Wake up. Oh, 
now. I've been thinking again. So I won the award, did I? Because the cameraman made me look good. Well, let me tell you something. George Discant, the finest cameraman in this business, told me I had one of those faces. Oh, well, honey, I I'm sure he didn't mean it. He said I could be photographed from any angle, in any kind of light, with or without makeup. The cameraman's dream, he said. Howard, why don't you start worrying about your own face? You look awful. you get in? An old trick Houdini taught me. Eve, darling, uh, listen to me. I've been thinking things over, too, and I agree with you. I am 100% wrong, and I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Oh, yes, I'll forgive you, Howard. But if you hammered a nail in a post every time we had an argument, then pulled it out every time we made up, the holes would still be there, wouldn't they? The holes? Howard, last night you were offensive to my public. Now, there are three things important to me in my life. You, my family, and my public. If you were rude to my family, I'd leave you. You would? Look, I just don't think we're getting anywhere. And we're not going to get anywhere until you get one thing absolutely clear. I have a duty to my public. No, I love having a duty to my public. And, and what's more than that, I love having a duty to have a public too. Is that clear? No. Oh. And one other thing. I do not need a cameraman to make me presentable to my public. Just remember that. You're turning into a fathead. Attention, folks. On your right is the home of that fine actor, Joseph Cox. And now this charming bungalow on the left is what you've been waiting for. The home of Hollywood's newly crowned queen, one of the world's loveliest and most glamorous ladies, Miss Eve Drake and her husband, Howard Adams. Her ever-loving public. The cameraman's dream. Good day. Oh, it's Howard Adams. Isn't he handsome? May I regard you all as uh, fans of Miss Drake's? Uh, yes, indeed, I am. That's why we're here, bub. Then in her name, may I invite you in to uh, meet her in person? <gasps> This is one of those once-in-a-lifetime deals. Here you are, folks. Right this way. Follow me. Oh, hurry, 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 hurry. Come on. Go. Yes. Oh, Boy, my. What a <laughs> <laughs> oh, Come right on in, folks. Make yourself at home. Lots of room. Come on in. Uh, now, if you'll all pardon me, I'll uh, go tell Miss Drake that you're here. She'll be so pleased to see you. You do that, folks. Eve! Oh, Eve! Where are you? Oh, oh, Miss. Just in case you're wondering, they're all here to see Eve Drake. Mr. Adams invited them all in. Tourists. You must be the maid. Is she up yet? Is that her breakfast? Say, a little bit. The Roy Rogers spread around these parts. Roy Rogers? Oh, yeah, you mean Roy Rogers, of course. Now, let me see. Oh, yes, Roy's little old outfit is about 15 miles from here down San Fernando Way. <laughs> oh, why, Mr. Adams, I do declare. Oh, isn't this a real treat, meeting these nice people? <laughs> it sure is. Now, you just sit right down here and eat your little breakfast. Oh, no, thanks. I'm not hungry anymore. Oh, yes, you are. Well, Mr. Adams? Yes? Tell me something, will you? Yes. How does Miss Drake stay so thin? It's not easy. You don't say. In order to keep that figure of hers, she goes through torture. Really? Mm -hmm. It's a constant fight. Mr. Adams? Yes? Oh, uh, excuse me. Mrs. Adams says she won't be back till after lunch. She's gone to see her mother. 
her mother again. Hmm? I do hope they didn't have to call the police. Uh, do you mind if we watch? Uh, not at all. Uh, we've never seen a movie star eat before. Uh, we're from Duluth. Minnesota. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Where are you from, little bit? You talk like home folks. Oh, well now, where do you think I'm from? Well, I was hoping Dallas. Uh, you hoped right. No. Yes. <laughs> what you hiding from, honey? Uh-oh, uh, smog burn. Now, how would you like a nice, cool drink, honey? <laughs> oh, I just love it, sugar. Oh, follow me. One soft boiled egg and three pieces of bacon. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, honey, I'm just one. <laughs> oh, 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 I declare, I, I just think you're terrible. Oh, you sure are cute. Oh, really? I'm only going to be here for another week. How's your evening? Oh, I just got loads of them. How about tomorrow? It's a date, Julie. <laughs> what makes you think you're going to be off tomorrow night? Oh, never mind, honey. I can fix it. Mrs. Adams has got a heart of gold. <laughs> Come, folks, let's go. Another 42 houses to see. Come on, Mary. Come on, Mary. Come on, Mary. Come on, Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Adams, and thank you. My pleasure. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, get on the bus. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Mr. Adams, and thank you. All right. My pleasure. Goodbye. Thank you. You don't mind. Be my guest. Uh, it's from a scrapbook. <laughs> Naturally. Bye. Goodbye. Glad you could come. I kind of had a feeling you was in Texas the minute I looked at you. Yes. <laughs> you know, I came here to see Miss Drake, but... I'm kind of glad she ain't here. Well, I'll let you in on a little secret, so am I. <laughs> you know, honey, I got a little shack down in Texas make this look like a, a carport. Oh, I just can't wait. Well, you're gonna have to. Now, why don't you just, uh, mosey? I beg your pardon? Git! I do declare, Mr. Adams. You shut up! Now, you wait a minute. You can't talk to this little filly like that. Watch the hand, cowboy. Off! You're sure looking for trouble, Acton. That tore it. Oh, oh! My husband! My husband! What have you done to him? You kill her? Husband? Don't you know better than to hit an actor in the face? Husband? Out! Out! I'm out. going, lady. I'm yeah, going. Out! 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 Oh, darling, darling, darling. Darling, how do you feel? Grand. Oh, can you ever forgive me? I don't know. Look, you're the dearest, most important thing in my life. Nothing else matters. I, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I've been 100% wrong. No. 50%. Don't forget my end of it. Oh. Mm. 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 Let's forget all about it, darling. <laughs> Nothing can ever come between us again. Nothing. Mm -hmm.